Welcome to Test 2 Plus, everybody. I am Trace, thanks for watching. This week we are talking about the senses that your body has, and then some. If you haven't watched our other episodes, make sure you do that. Also subscribe so you get all five of our episodes this week. This episode, we're gonna talk about how the brain can sometimes strengthen or even alter your senses. What happens when senses go crazy? So what happens when senses go haywire? The brain is a complicated organ. It's sucking up all of this information around us all the time, trying to, you know, sniff out the truth, to use a sense pun. The brain takes this information and puts it all together, and it happens through plasticity. The brain is constantly writing neuropathways and rewriting neuropathways, and occasionally things go wrong. Sometimes there's crosstalk, you get entanglement of the senses. Sometimes, genetically, senses are intertwined when they shouldn't be, and sometimes people get injured. The brain is really good at compensating for all of these things. Sometimes when people have traumatic brain injuries, all of a sudden, uh, they can learn to do amazing things. This is called acquired savant syndrome. Uh, a guy named Derek Amato was horsing around outside out of, at a pool. He hit his head at the bottom of the pool. He came up, he was okay, but he went to the hospital and he had a, a concussion. Not long after that, he could play the piano like he'd been playing it his whole life. His musical ability prior to that, he had rated in news reports I've read somewhere like two or three. And this was, he was spontaneously creating concertos. He has recordings now, CDs that he's released of his piano abilities that he acquired by damaging his brain. What happened is that his brain rerouted that sensory information. It rerouted the information around the damaged area, and in doing so, went through another area that is connected to musical ability. And he, it lit up an area that it hadn't before. And in doing so, he natively understood the piano and could experience playing it without having to learn all of those things. Honestly, I would love that, except of course that you have to have a kind of major concussion and he ended up with all sorts of other issues in terms of headaches and problems with his, uh, his brain because of it. But he can also play the piano really well because that's how plastic the brain is. It learns to reroute around problems. Sometimes, like I mentioned, this happens genetically. It's called sense entanglement. And the most famous type of sense entanglement is synesthesia. Synesthesia is the combination of senses in the brain. It's the, sim the, the dictionary defines it as the stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathway, which leads to an automatic, involuntary experience in a second sensory or cognitive pathway. It happens in five to 15% of people and to put it in less scientific terminology, it means that sometimes you'll taste music or you'll hear colors. This is a thing where the brain conflates sensory information and it comes in different strengths or, or flavors, as I like to call them. My friend Mary is an artist. She has uh, synesthesia in the color pattern way, color and shape conflation. So certain words and letters have certain colors associated with them for her. She came home to her mother one day and she told me this story about her mother said, you know, what's wrong? She seemed like something had been gone wrong at school. And she said, the girl next to me colored Monday wrong. She colored it red and it's blue or whatever color. I can't remember what she told me. But for her, it wasn't that you should be blue. It was Monday is blue. It's like coloring an apple the wrong color or the sky the wrong color. It bothers people with synesthesia because for them, they don't see it independently. They are connected. There are even emotional synesthetes who literally feel the pain of other people when they see it. Say in a movie, somebody gets punched. They would literally feel that as they were seeing it. Surprisingly, we have yet to cover this on our other science show, DNews. We really want to, but we have to find a synesthesia expert, and those are very difficult to find, it turns out. So if you're jealous, like I kind of am, of our synesthetic friends, there is some science to show that normal humans have a minor synesthesia. Essentially, it's smell 
and color are conflated or related. When you smell something, you tend to feel that it would have a certain color if you could see it. Uh, a study in PLOS One that came out, uh, I think, within the last year or so, uh, did this study in the Netherlands, where they brought people in from various cultural backgrounds, Chinese people, um, European people, people from Africa, people from various Pacific Islands, and they found that across all of these, there is a universal palette of smell to color. So if you smell something fruity, what color do you think of? According to this, you're probably thinking of something pink or red. Their study also found that musty smells, you would think of an orange or a brown, and soapy smells conjure up pastel colors. Plasticky smells are more neutral, like grays and off-whites. And all of these, again, are universal across cultures, which means that it is something kind of inborn, perhaps. There's also chromesthesia, which is something that us normal humans can sort of experience that synesthetics might have. Chromesthesia is when brain pathways cross, causing music to exhibit color. Synesthetics or synesthetes would not be able to choose what colors they see. Uh, they would relate you know, a C major with a very specific color. But for us out here in the non-synesthete world, we would probably see this as like something at a concert or going to a fireworks show. When something happens, you picture a big bright flash of light. And that's about as close as we can get to be synesthetic, is smelling something and thinking of a color or seeing a musical light show. That being said, all of this sense entanglement and the idea that the brain can repair itself to create new things and new senses is interesting because there are people who think that senses exist that actually don't. Are there any senses that you wish you had? I mean, we've talked about a lot of them so far this week. Next episode, we're going to talk about wackier senses, senses that probably don't exist. Go ahead, subscribe so you don't miss that episode tomorrow, and click here if you would like to see our previous episode, which looks at how senses are being improved through injury. It's pretty cool. And thank you for watching.